Over the last month, we have been testing these new MacBooks like crazy, and I know we have made more content than anyone else, and while these machines are very nice and very fast, they definitely have their downsides. So in this video, I wanna make it very easy for those of you guys that wanna buy one to know all of the issues and problems before you spend your hard-earned money, and that makes it easy so you don't have to watch all of those videos. For the first one, if you are a video editor like we are, you have to know that even though the performance is incredible, the actual encoders are identical. So if you're spending $1,600 or even $2,000 on one of these MacBooks, the encoding speed is gonna be exactly the same as a $750 M1 MacBook Air that came out in 2020. And unless you're putting in a ton of crazy effects effects that are gonna just push the system like crazy, you might not notice any difference in terms of regular 4K editing. Number two is battery life, especially with the M3 Max model. The hardware is so fast that it uses a ton of power and you get about two hours less battery life than you do on the M2 Max version. Now here is a chart from Tom's hardware that is excellent with a lot of systems. You guys can see that difference, but on the positive, the base M3 3 14 inch actually does incredibly well because of its large battery size to performance ratio. And for number three is how hot and how loud these machines can get, especially the M3 Max. This thing uses almost as much power as the very best Intel chips, and a lot of times it's the same. Because of that, the fans kick up really fast, it gets hotter than before, at least at the start, and it can get loud and annoying. Now with that, the $1,600 M3 model that has a single fan, that also gets hotter and much louder than before with the 14 inch models because Apple cut a fan out. So if you care about it being quiet, keep that in consideration. Now I will say I made an excellent low power mode video that is absolutely shocking. So if you're looking into getting M3 Max and you care about noise and heat, definitely watch that. Number four is the last one with the M3 Max performance, and that is the 14 inch model. Previously, we saw that the 14 inch would be quite a bit slower than the 16 inch model, and this year it is a lot worse because the 14 inch just gets so hot that it slows down a ton and it makes the M3 Max perform more like a pro chip instead of a Max chip. So if you care about performance and you wanna get a Max chip, you definitely should get a 16 inch. Now for number five, we're going down to that $1,600 new M3 machine. And one thing that a lot of people don't talk about is that it's actually missing a Thunderbolt port on the machine compared to all the other 14 inch models. And this is something that I even keep forgetting myself. And that can be a good difference if you're gonna be connecting different accessories. So that's another reason to spend a little bit more. Now with that, for number six is that this $1,600 machine that can go up a lot more if you upgrade it can only support one external display, even though it has an HDMI port and it has multiple Thunderbolt ports, you are still limited. Um, so if you care about that, you might wanna spend a little bit more money, especially if you're going to upgrade the RAM. And that is the next one. The eight gigs of RAM severely slows the system down because even just launching the system, you're using close to six gigs of RAM just for Mac OS. And then when you start to open web browsing tabs, some applications, it is just much slower. And even if you don't have multiple programs, the 16 gig version is so much quicker just because as extra RAM. And with that, some programs won't even let you use graphics acceleration because there's not enough RAM. Now, in the past, eight gigs was not as big of a deal because the processors like the M1 weren't as fast, but now it's a much bigger bottleneck. And for number eight, I actually mentioned this in number three, um, which I wasn't going to. Well, that is just that single fan in this system, which makes it hotter and louder than before. So I will add in, even though we have this new cheaper Mac with this new form factor, by the time you do some upgrades, you might as well get the $2,000 M3 Pro because it absolutely blows it away in pretty much every way. It's a much better bang for the buck. 
And for number nine, we have the price increases. Even though we have that cheaper model, if you take a look at the max models, which have the best performance, it's actually more expensive. Before it was 3,500 to get the best CPU and graphics performance, but now it costs $4,000. And with that, people ask, is it worth it? We actually made a video comparing all of the chips. It's an excellent video. And the $4,000 one does actually give you better value for the money because you not only get better performance, but you actually get more RAM as well. And number 10 is another little sneaky move that Apple did this year to get you to spend more money because now you only get the best CPU performance if you get a Max chip and the $4,000 model. The previous two generations, you can get a Pro chip, so an M1 or M2 Pro, and you'd get the same CPU performance as spending $1,000 more on a Max. So if you didn't use heavy graphics, you could save some money, but now they've split the lineup so well that it just makes you spend spend more money, even if you don't need extra RAM or graphics performance. For the first time ever, Apple actually went down in terms of performance cores and in terms of graphics cores for this system, so much so that in some tests, it's actually slower than the M2 Pro. And with that, they dropped the memory bandwidth by 25% on this as well. And that also can suck in some programs. Now, thankfully, they've done a lot of other great things with this chip. So in some real world tasks, it could be much faster, but it really depends on what you're doing. And this is where I would really look into our detailed comparisons before you make your decision. And next, we have to talk about the storage and the speed. If you're spending $2,000, you're still gonna get quite a bit slower storage than you could back two generations ago because they're using less NAND chips inside. So this is where I'll say that if you're on the fence upgrading to one terabyte, you're not only gonna get double the storage for 200 bucks, but faster speeds as well. So I would push you if you're on the fence just to spend a little bit more money. And for the last one, number 13, this is another thing that they switched. And now if you wanna get a high amount of storage, if you have a need for that and the money, you can no longer do that with a pro chip. Before you could, now you have to upgrade to a max chip in order to get um, extra NANDs on the motherboard because they are just limiting it now. And that's another way to get you to spend more money. So even though we really like these machines other than that $1,600 model because the value for the money is much worse than spending 400 bucks more, um, they are great, but you are gonna be paying for those improvements where in the past, the prices stayed pretty much the same, or maybe they just made the machine slightly worse in some areas. And some people have also mentioned that now for that $1,600 machine, the BIOS for the logic board and the motherboard is on the memory chips, so if you get a low one with low RAM, your memory will actually wear out quicker. And then if it wears out, you have to spend seven to 900 bucks on a new logic board where before you could pay somebody to swap out the chip for you. So another cost savings that they put into that base machine. So I guess that will be a bonus number 14. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure to check out the other comparisons because we have much more info and a lot of positive things to talk about. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max, and I'll see you in the next one.